Eighth grade, open up resources, illustrative mathematics. Unit five, lesson 18, scaling two dimensions. Problem number one. There are many cylinders with a height of 18 meters. Let R represent the radius in meters and V represent the volume in cubic meters. A. Write an equation that represents the volume, V, as the function of the radius, R. We can start out using the formula for finding the volume of a cylinder. V equals pi times R squared times height. Since we're talking about cylinders with a height of 18 meters, we can substitute the H with an 18. We can also rewrite this as V equals 18 times pi times R squared, or V equals 18 pi R squared. B. Complete this table, giving three possible examples. In the table, they have a 1 representing the radius. So in our equation, we need to substitute the R with a 1. Now the equation reads V equals pi times 1 squared times 18, which is equal to V equals 18 times pi, or V equals pi times 18. When the radius is 1, the volume is 18 times pi. For the next row in the example, let's use 2. So now we can substitute the R with a 2. V equals pi times R squared times 18. 2 times 2 times 18 equals 72. So when the radius is 2, the volume is 72 times pi. For this last example, let's use a 5 as the radius. So we'll substitute the R with a 5. V equals pi times 5 squared times 18. 5 times 5 times 18 is 450. When the radius is 5, the volume is 450 pi. C. If the radius of a cylinder is doubled, does the volume double? Explain how you know. Let's go back to the table and change out the radius 5 and make it a radius of 4. Because a radius of 4 is double a radius of 2. V equals pi times 4 squared times 18. That's the same as V equals 288 pi. So when the radius is 4, the volume is 288 pi. Let's go back to the chart and look at the volume when the radius is 2. Doubling 72 would give you a volume of 144. But as you can see here, when you double the radius of 2, you have a volume of 288 times pi. So I would say no. D. Is the graph of this function a line? Explain how you know. I've graphed these three points on a line, and as you can see, they do not form a straight line. Problem number two, from eighth grade unit five, lesson three. As part of a competition, Diego must spin around in a circle six times and then run to a tree. The time he spends on each spin is represented by S, and the time he spends running is R. He gets to the tree in 21 seconds after he starts spinning. A. Write an equation showing the relationship between S and R. Six spins plus one run equals 21 seconds total. That can be written as 6s plus r equals 21. B. Rearrange the equation so that it shows r as a function of s. That means that we rewrite the equation as if we were solving for r. In order to move the 6s over to the other side of the equal sign, we have to subtract 6s from both sides. That would be r equals 21 minus 6s, or r equals negative 6s plus 21. C. If it takes Diego 1.2 seconds to spin around each time, how many seconds did he spend running? To solve this, we have to substitute the s with 1.2 seconds. 
That means that we need to multiply negative 6 times 1.2 seconds. Negative 6 times 1.2 seconds is negative 7.2. 21 seconds minus 7.2 seconds equals the running time. The running portion would have taken 13.8 seconds. Problem number 3 from 8th grade Unit 5 Lesson 7. The table and graph represent two functions. Use the table and graph to answer the questions. A. For which values of x is the output from the table less than the output from the graph. On the table, when x is 1, y is 3. And on the graph, when x is 1, y is a little bit more than 2. I'd say no for this one because the table has a higher output than the graph. On the table, when x is 2, y is negative 1. But on the graph, when x is 2, y is almost positive 4. Yes, this one, the table output, is less than the output on the graph. For the next one, in the table, when x is 3, y is 0. But on the graph, when x is 3, y is just a little bit less than positive 4. Yes, this one, the table output, is less than the output on the graph. Let's look at the next one in the table. When the value for x is 4, the value for y is 4. Now let's look at the graph. When the value for x is 4, the value for y is a little bit more than 2. I'd say no for this one because the table has a higher output than the graph. Let's look at the table again. When the value for x is 5, the value for y is also 5. Now let's look at the graph. When the value for x is 5, the value for y is 0. This is also a no because the value for y in the table is greater than the value for y on the graph. Last one. Let's look at the table. When the value for x is 6, the value for y is negative 1. Now let's look at the graph. When the value for x is 6, the value for y is between negative 2 and negative 3. This one is also a no because the value for y in the table is negative 1, which is greater than the value for y on the graph, which is somewhere between negative 2 and negative 3. B. In the graphed function, which value of x gives an output of 0? On the graph, I can see three locations where the output or y value is 0. When the value for x is 0, the value for y is 0. When the value for x is 5, the value for y is 0. And when the value for x is 10, the value for y is 0. So at x values 0, 5, and 10, the output, or y value, is 0. Problem number 4. A cone has a radius of 3 units and a height of 4 units. A. What is the volume of this cone? Let's start with the formula. Volume of a cone equals one-third times pi times r squared times height. They've given us the radius and the height, so we can substitute the radius with a 3 and the height with a 4. Now the equation reads volume equals one-third pi times 3 times 3 times 4. Since order doesn't matter in multiplication, we can look at this as 1 third times 3 times 3 times 4 times pi, or 12 times pi. So the volume of this cone is 12 pi. B. Another cone has quadruple the radius and the same height. How many times larger is the new cone's volume? When you quadruple 3, you get 12. So we're going to substitute the r with a 12. Now the equation reads v equals 1 third pi times 12 squared times 4, which is 1 third times pi times 12 times 12 times 4. And again, because the order doesn't matter in multiplication, we could look at this as 1 third of 12 times 12 times 4 times pi. And 1 third of 12 is 4. So the equation could read volume equals 4 times 12 times 4 times pi. Or the volume is 
192 times pi. How many times larger is the new cone's volume? Let's take the new volume and divide it by the old volume. 192 times pi divided by 12 times pi. Since 12 goes into 192 16 times, the new volume is 16 times greater than the old volume.